Hello everyone and welcome to our 6,000 subscriber thank you video. As usual, I am blown away by the fact that our community has grown so much and I am so grateful to have met so many of you and to just watch as we follow our interests and our passion in storytelling and learning more about the natural world in animals and plants in just the natural world in general basically uh, and just see as the ripple effect goes out and people who share those interests to start gathering around into our community and you guys have been amazing i read all the comments all the time you're so friendly and your creativity i love the creativity and the curiosity that i see among all of you and it's just it's wonderful that more than anything else is what i really love about our community is that we're able to to take that little the little, little flame of curiosity and pass it on to one another and that's kind of what I want to do today. I was thinking, man, wow, we passed 6,000 really fast and we're almost up to 7,000 community members already. And I was trying to think, what could I do? What could I do? What's something really special? And I know this may seem silly to some of you, but I thought, oh, I know what I want to do. I want to show off my specimens, my twigs, my rocks, my, my plants, uh, just the seashells, all of the random things that I've collected throughout the years. Um, a lot of it I lost when I recently moved. You know, you just have to purge. And when you're staring at a stick covered in moss and you're like, do I really want to move that? Then sometimes the stick doesn't make it. <laughs> But that's why we get to go on hikes and make some awesome hiking vlogs and do all sorts of fun adventures together. I plan on going to some of the mineral and fossil museums that are around here pretty soon because all of those little random things I have hidden around my house that I'm about to show you are, for me, beautiful, fascinating examples of the world that we all share. And I'm sure I'm not the only one out there who, even though... I'm not a kid anymore, <laughs> still loves collecting acorns and rocks, and I used to have a beautiful selection of snakeskins. I wasn't allowed to bring that into my aunt's house, so I had to say goodbye to those, but those are all really fascinating examples of what the natural world has out there to offer and to teach us. Um, honestly, when I was teaching, one of the, the best things I found I could do was to put a physical item in my students' hands and go, this is what a piece of coral looks like, or this is what like a dead insect looks like under the microscope. The power of observation that we have is one of our greatest benefits when it comes to being able to nurture and grow our own curiosity and our passion for whatever we're into. And I know a lot of you share some similar interests. I know we've definitely got some uh, people very into animals. Some of you have been talking recently about how you watch over peafowl. You have chickens. You raise miniature rabbits. All of those things are really awesome. Many of you have snakes and reptiles like I do, and it's just a fantastic way to share our passion by showing off those things. And so today I'm going to show off my specimens. Um, some of you may not think that looking at a horseshoe crab shell is the most interesting thing in the world. Personally, I think it's amazing, and it'll be a great idea for you guys to kind of, you know, use your powers of observation to look around in the video, because one of the things I love doing in my house, personally, is hiding things everywhere. You think you're looking at a bookshelf, but if you look closer, there's some rocks hiding behind the books, or there's, like, a beautiful teacup set up, but if you look inside, it's filled with, <laughs> with, like, pieces of acorn or beetle wings or anything that I happen to find out while hiking or walking or whatever. And for me, that's, that's like I said, you know, gotta get your curiosity going. So finding those surprises is one of the ways to do that. So today I'm showing off my specimens and I encourage you if you have some collection of your own from the natural world that you would like to show off, take a picture, make a video, and I will be very happy to go ahead and like Put a community album on our Facebook so that we can all share our own individual interests. I know some of you are into collecting shark teeth. I'm pretty envious. I kind of really want to get my hands on a megalodon tooth now, which is actually the official fossil of this state, I found out. So hopefully when we go to the fossil museum, we'll be able to find one. I bet they're not cheap, but I would love to have a specimen. And there's tons of rocks, really cool things, just examples of what the natural world has. So I'm going to show off those to you. If you guys have any collections of your own, please feel free, share them with us, take pictures, make a video, put links on the Facebook, tweet them to me, and I'll put them together in a nice album so that we can see some of the passions that we share as a community. And again, wow, we're growing so much. 
and I wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much for whatever reason you're here. If it's the storytelling, if it's the adventure, Sims, Minecraft, Spore, the blogs, whatever reason you're here, I'm so happy that you have joined us. And I hope that you can learn something along the way because that's really my goal. <laughs> so thank you so much, everybody. And I hope you enjoy seeing some of the random things I have hiding around my house. And hopefully we'll collect even more to show off after doing a few more hiking vlogs and things like that. So I look forward to sharing those with you. All right, guys. And first up are some of my living specimens! These are actually some of my philodendria. I call these two the Siamese twins because I've had them for about five years now. Uh, they are kind of like a leaf waterfall, as you can see. And I actually make regular trimmings out of these guys to start more philodendria. In fact, the ones over there on that bookshelf were from these ones. And this was just one small philodendria plant that was growing in this pot. And it just kept growing. And one day I had this pot next to it. And the next thing I know, these guys snuck into this pot, got their roots in, and now these two are connected. So that's why they're the Siamese twins. If I want to move one pot, I have to move them both at the same time because they're the same exact plant. It's it just kind of jumped, got its roots in, and jumped again. If I wanted to, I could probably trim it, but I really love how long it is and how much it's grown. Look at it. Look at all the new little babies. Look at my babies. All these new little sprouts. But yeah, I make regular trimmings of this and give it away to people uh, when they're interested because I really, I love philodendria. So easy to grow. One of the few things that I've, ha I've had these guys since I lived in the Midwest, they have moved across the country with me. So if you ever want to know what it looks like when you're moving with Siri, I have like two boxes of stuff and then many, many, many plants. It looks like a mobile greenhouse, complete with geckos and dogs and everything else. And then some of my actual specimens, one of my favorite seashell specimens is in here. It's huge, it's almost the size of my hand. I found this one at the Sarasota Beach in Florida. And I've got a lot of seashells just kind of hidden around. I like to hide things, see? I like to kind of tuck things uh, behind leaves and hidden in little spots so that if you want to find stuff in my house, you have to use your powers of observation to see if you can discover what I've got hidden. And on the other side of the wonderful Siamese twin philodendrias, we have some more shells. This is actually a really beautiful natural shell that we had for the hermit crabs when I worked at the pet store. And I saw it and I actually bought it for myself because it was so beautiful. We didn't get a lot of natural shells in, which I thought was a pity. A lot better to give them something this beautiful than something that looks like a race car. This big puppy, I don't remember where I found it, but this was another beach find. Uh, you know, and collecting seashells can be a little controversial, but I think just a few is okay. And then this is just a really beautiful, not a natural specimen, but a beautiful present from one of my friends. Really wonderful friend. When I was feeling sad, one day I, I got this, and it's just so lovely. Little, little plant. It's a little glass plant. But over here, some of my specimens, some acorn shells, um, some just walnuts, pecans, different things that I've found. Really, I know it may seem kind of random, like, these are just empty acorn huts, Siri. But when you are, like into nature in every way. Even half a walnut shell is so fascinating. I mean, look at how thick this thing is. And you can see where it has a little burrow where something was trying to get in and eat at it. Ah, so adorable. One of my geckos from the massive gecko collection. And then I love teacups as well. I have a lot of teacups. <laughs> I drink a lot of tea. I love herbal tea. And then that is actually a beautiful garden sign painted from my late grandmother. She was a very big gardener. Not really when I knew her. That was before I was born. But she was an artist as well. And so she made that. And that's one of my little trinkets that I have left over from her. And then lots of rocks. Random pieces of foliage from outside. Rocks. Uh, you know, basically if you look around, living plants, this was an orchid. Uh, it is no longer an orchid. I'm working on getting the orchid growing thing down. This is a red lily of some kind. I can't remember what kind, but it's doing okay. These guys, I don't know what the heck these guys are, but I've been growing them for a long time too. Yeah, but you're going to see little random rocks everywhere. This is a beautiful specimen as well. I've really enjoyed. I like the mixed ones. Some people are really in purist about their gems. They only want it to be one variety. But personally, I love mixed uh, mixed specimens. Oh, and then, of course, we have a little squirrel with some acorns. So again, even though it just looks like little acorns, 
I guess I never grew out of being the kid who loved to collect the random things when you go outside, and then you come home and you keep them. Same with this leaf. I've had this leaf, believe it or not, probably for three or four years, and I just thought it was really interesting the way it was green on the inside and red on the outside. You could see the transition in the season, so I kept it, and it dried, and it's still here. <laughs> Then over here, this is actually a beautiful example of artwork, and I think that it's important to not just stick to like one thing or the other. This is art and nature combined, so it's not just art, it's not just nature, it kind of represents both my interests, but these are moral mushrooms from the beautiful festival, an art and harvest festival that is like happens back in the Midwest, back where my family lives, and I picked it up from a vendor there. He handmade it. Oh, and this is also handmade. A beautiful vase handmade by a uh, ceramic student in the same town. I bought that from him at the same festival in a different year. I try to bring home something nice from those festivals every year, and I really love it. But you've got more rocks. See what I mean? Everywhere you look, you're going to see things hidden, like this jar. This jar right here is full of all of these little specimens of this color of rock. The gem mines are very popular here in North Carolina. I really love going to them, even though they're kind of tourist traps. <laughs> you buy a bucket of like dirt and sand from one of the mines, and then you sift through it. You sit down at this cool sifter, and you just kind of sift through the rocks. Personally, I think it's amazingly fun. I might take my parents there next month when they come to visit, and maybe we'll do a vlog while we're there. But I also got these guys there. Very beautiful. See what I mean about the mixed, the mixed minerals? It's not just one stone, but yeah, these were from a bucket, and I got to sift them out and pick them out myself. And this is just the way they grow, just like these. Really cool. Can you imagine how old these are too? But I love them. I love them. So you've got like all of these little specimens kind of hiding around. But up next is one of my favorites, my pine cone specimens. Look at them. Look at them. These are all pine cones, except for the acorn parts. Ignore the acorn parts. But look at this. This is my smallest pine cone specimen, and he's itty teensy itty bitty. See, just a tiny little guy. He, he like barely doesn't even take up a whole finger digit. And then you come over here, and we've got this mammoth. Look at him. Look at the sheer size of him. Isn't he huge? I love it. And you, you want to know something cool? These two pine cone specimens were about probably 20 feet apart from each other. They were from two different trees, obviously, but they were growing right next to each other, and I thought that was amazing. Then we've got some more smaller ones. The regular size pine cones I'm used to in the Midwest uh, kind of fall between this medium one right here and the large one, but never that big. I thought that was so cool. And of course, another philodendria. How you doing? Yeah, yeah. Are you so cute? Yeah, you're cute. Oh, so oh, I love these guys. I want more examples between the big size and the little size of the same thing. And actually, I do have a few of those, so I'll show you guys those next. Now, when it comes to size comparison, I do have a few more really interesting examples. And keep in mind, these aren't the same species of items. They're just uh, kind of similar. Now, in this case, look at the size. This is my biggest snail specimen, snail shell specimen that I have. Uh, I can't really remember where I found this one. I think it was just in my family garden years and years and years ago. It's traveled quite well. I've kept it quite safe. But you can see there are several different sizes of shells. And these are all land snail shells. And these are actually shells that I've found uh, in the garden. So even though some of them look like they would be from uh, the ocean, these were found in the garden. I don't, and based off of the shape of them, I don't think that they were just seashells that somehow got put somewhere, except for this guy. That guy's a seashell. Ignore him. He's just kind of there because he matched. But even though we have this teensy tiny little one, this is the smallest one for this group, if we pick this one up and look at some of the seashells that I collected and I put in here from the beaches of South Carolina. These, this was actually from Myrtle Beach when we visited last year. I sat for hours and collected these tiny tiny specimens that are inside this jar. Sorry for the glare, it's just really bright today. But yeah, that are inside this jar. And this is some of, like it's really hard to even focus on on them because they're so tiny. I know they're so teensy. But that is a snail shell. Look at it. Look at it. 
so small. It is so tiny. This is the smallest land one I have. And then let's pull down our big guy. Boom. There's a big comparison right there. This is actually, if you look closely, one of these kinds of shells, only in the miniature. Not exactly the same, because they're not the same species, but really close. And I really, I love looking at that. Look at that. And you have to be super gentle. You can break these so easily. But boom, boom, boom. Three shells that look almost identical, but they're different in size. And I love having those kinds of examples. Sometimes it's just so fun to look at these and think about how they're all from the same planet. They're from different places. They look so similar. And what it means, like these two are probably the same species. So did this guy die early and this guy lived on old age? Why? It's a mystery. It's totally an awesome mystery. But I've also got up here some more seashells. These are a mix from the beach of Sarasota, Florida and Myrtle Beach in South Carolina. And these are called lion's paws right here. And I think they're rather awesome. They look a little bit like a cat paw, I've been told. And now that I saw it, like I can't unsee it. They're also kind of like a pretty dainty fan. But I've also got an example. Big lion paw, little lion paw. And this isn't even the biggest lion paw I have. It's just one of the prettier ones. So that's why it's out. And then what else do we have up here? More handmade, I love handmade ceramic art. I'm, I've kind of got a passion for it. And as you can see, there's kind of a theme to greenery that happens in my house too. But we've also got some more specimens over here. This little socket cup actually holds my current egg specimens. And we've got a few different types of eggs. If you guys have seen my Easter special vlog, then you've seen some of these before. You know that some of them are poorly calcified take out the robin's egg so delicately. This one breaks apart very easily so you have to be super gentle with it. There. This is just a bit of a robin's egg I believe. I'm guessing because we have robins nesting in the tree that I found this under and it is it is pretty blue but I don't know if it's their egg but that is a bird egg and then this is bird egg. This is actually an infertile finch egg from my finches. And if you look at how they're shaped, I love the shape of this egg because it'll just kind of roll in a circle. And that's to keep the egg from falling out of the nest. I love that. Then we've also got some abandoned eggs from a wild bird that nested in our shed. Let's see. More finch eggs. And then these are gecko eggs. So you can look at the comparison for shape. These are poorly calcified gecko eggs. Those are even more poorly calcified right here, here, and here. But these guys, they're poorly calcified is kind of a strong term, but because they're not, they're not supposed to fold like this. None of them are supposed to look like that. They're supposed to be kind of like this, nice and smooth and even, just the right shape. But those are from my rescue geckos back when they were laying eggs. I don't have my males and females paired up right now because I don't need baby geckos. I want to make them healthy. But yeah, and then very gently. So it's kind of fun. We've got the example of several different species eggs tucked away just very gently. And you have to kind of ask to figure out, hey, what's over there? What's Siri hiding over there? All right, let's see if there's anything else I can find. Yes, my gecko collection. Gecko slash lizard collection. Um, not just limited to, like, to, to geckos. This is from exotic let's see, custom exotics from Etsy. I won one of her giveaways and she handmade a custom little leopard gecko for me. It's super realistic. I really love it. I love the color on it too. And then we've got a little, this is a little lizard gecko that my little cousin gave me as a present. And then this is one that my other cousin, her little sister, gave me as a present. You guys might recognize him from Tangled. And then same cousin, different birthday. She knows what I like. I love the way my gecko collection is spreading. I've got a few more scattered around. So it's always kind of fun to take a peek and see if you can find geckos whenever I do a vlog because you probably can. I collect them. I love them. I love the, the rustic artsy look, especially when they're handmade or custom like this. But even they're hiding some treasures. So over here, this is actually a piece of amber that I have and I really love. And it's got an itty bitty little fly in it. Itty bitty teeny weeny little fly. It's not the best specimen, but it was the most I could afford at the time. We were at a little kiosk on the side of the road out in the middle of nowhere. And they had amber for sale and I really wanted it. So I snagged it and I'm hoping it's authentic. It had a little certificate and everything. We've also got some fluorite or fluoride, fluorite? 
fluorite, I think, uh, crystals, these ones have been shaped, so they don't grow like this. I think this is an example of them more as a whole. This is actually from those mines again when I was out uh, sifting around in the sand for things. Those are just little cute guys from Asheville, North Carolina, which is a very artsy place. If you've ever been to Asheville, you know art like artisan shops are absolutely everywhere, and I totally love them. He's so cute. But I love these because they remind me of some plum bobs, and they're just really pretty. This is just a little broken, polished stone. So there's, there's little things hiding everywhere. See, there's even stuff hiding over there. That's actually a whistle. You put water in it, it makes bird sounds. But yeah, my little gecko collection. That kind of complements the real life geckos too. And as far as having specimens around the house, basically no surface is safe. This is the top of the bookshelf. Uh, well, not the tippy top. That belongs to you, little Al, and your little buddies over here. Oh, and this frog. This frog's actually from Vietnam. He's such a cool little frog. He's supposed to make Vietnami frog noises, but I've not managed to get him to do that just yet. And this scarf is actually made from llama wool and llama leather. I got it before I went vegan, uh, but it is from Peru. And it was sold through a group that sends all the money back to the women who made it. So I really, I love that scarf. I never wear it enough. Oh, and these little triceratops. But anyway, top of the bookshelf, still not safe from all my specimens. Here we have all of my feather specimens. A few of these are really tiny. These ones are from my finches, some of the fledglings feathers that they gave me. A few of these are from the geese at the park. A few of these are from a very unfortunate bluebird. Uh, the rest of the bluebird had been consumed by an animal, but I found these in a trail as I was walking down the trail. So I kept a couple of them because they're beautiful beautiful specimens. The color really maintains itself even though it's been about a year since I found them. Then we've got some big old feathers. I don't even know who some of these belong to, but identifying them one day, I'm pretty sure this is a crow feather. And it's huge. Look at that. That's just one feather too. That takes a lot of work to grow. But identifying these is just kind of fun. And they make a good decorative piece sitting here on top of my bookshelf. Also fan art from Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. But in terms of my favorite specimens, I have saved the best for last. These are some coral pieces that were given to me as a child. Maybe my family had more of an influence on uh, what I enjoy about nature than I usually think. Because these were given to me, I think they're dyed, which kind of makes me a bit sad, but I could be totally wrong. Um, from my aunt and uncle after they went on a cruise and they sent them to me in the mail. Which is kind of interesting because I had no clue how they knew I would love this, but I do. Then these are just shell pieces that I've collected at all the different beaches we've gone to. This is probably the biggest guy I have. He's huge! Look at that! Takes up my whole hand. And then of course, if you look around in my house, you're always going to find random empty jars that I've cleaned. There's pine cones, acorns, seashells, uh, all sorts of nuts, lichen, lichen, see? Dried moss. Uh, I basically love collecting specimens. This is just a stick covered in moss. <laughs> stick covered in, in moss and lichen that I thought was beautiful and I've had it for like two years now. It's traveled with me because I think it's a beautiful specimen and you know it really is. It's an interest in these kinds of things that most people would just think is a weird stick that lets you know that you have a passion. Also this is my one of my plants. One of my plants. And then let's see. Then finally, finally my favorite specimen of all, he lives down here, this. This is Spartacus. This is actually a uh, helmet crab. Look at it. Ooh, it's so beautiful. Oh, he's so lovely. But, oh, yep. This guy we found off of the coast of Sarasota. Uh, no, not Sarasota, the coast of uh, Myrtle Beach, and it just kind of washed up in the morning. And the, one of the people with me freaked out. They were like, oh, what is it? And they brought it up, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe that's the shell. And so it is the shell of a helmet crab, I believe. Oh, my gosh. They're really amazing. They serve a very important vital function. Uh in terms of, like, their blood is collected. Their blue blood binds with copper instead of iron, if I remember correctly, unlike ours. And so we harvest a lot of these guys' blood every year to make important advances in cancer research and medicine. But this is probably my favorite all-time specimen. I mean, how many people have one of these sitting in their house? Like, all the rest of the stuff, you can go get a stick out of your own yard, you know what I mean? But this guy, Spartacus, is one of my proudest specimens, and I'm really happy to show him off. It's covered in scratches, and I don't know if those were pre-death or post-mortem scratches, because this shell could have been knocking around for a long time. Uh, it doesn't really have a lot in it, 
just kind of like where you can see the muscle used to attach to the, the little shell. Um, and other than that, he still smells a little bit like the ocean too. And I love that we've got one eye capsule intact. Yes, it's a very interesting specimen. But yes, so this is my favorite specimen. Uh, that's just a small sampling of what's in the house too. As you can see, there's rocks and crystals absolutely everywhere. But that's how you know you have a passion. So I'm really excited to see what you guys have to share. And then hopefully next time I can show you guys even more of my specimens and give you a little more detail about the biology and the facts behind them. So thank you so much, you guys, for watching. Goodbye, Spartacus. Thank you so much for all of your support, for your interest, and for just letting me know there are other people out there who have such a passion in the natural world. If you do too, don't be shy. Share your stuff. That's what we're here for. We're a community who's into that kind of stuff. Sharing all the specimens, all of the cool things that have gone on, all of our pets. It's awesome. So remember, if you have some cool specimens, seashells, plants, it could be like rocks, it could be whatever you want. As you can see, I definitely have a little bit of everything, including this fan. That fan is actually from uh, Japan, brought back for me by my uh, Japanese teacher one year. You know, it could be anything, so show off your specimens, things that you like about the natural world, things that you collect, things that people might go, oh, it's just a box of rocks, and guess what? We'll be excited to see it. So I look forward to seeing that, you guys, oh, and I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I look forward to going on more adventures and collecting more specimens with you in the future. Bye-bye!